Hi, I'm Kindo. Today is Thursday, which means it's time for another Title Cycles video tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about Title MIDI, how to install it, and how to do some basic stuff with it. In a future video, we're going to talk about how to do some complex stuff with it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this Title Cycles video tutorial on Title MIDI. Well, hello. Today we are going to install and use Title MIDI. I am going to assume that you have used Title for sample patterning in uh, with Dirt and Dirt samples or Dirt synth defs. Uh, what we're going to do today is connect to a MIDI device using the Title MIDI module and uh, play with that. Yeah, so let's get to it. All right, so the first thing you need to do is install Title MIDI. If I type Cabal List Title, this will go out to the Cabal um, package repository and find all things Title. Here I can see that Title MIDI is not installed. So I can type uh, Cabal Install Title MIDI. And after a few short moments, it will get installed and the awkward silence will end. There we go. Title MIDI is installed. That's it. Okay. So now we need to move on to the code part. So um, here's my cheat sheet of stuff we got to talk about. All right. Step one is we need to import this sound title MIDI context thing which is really uh, a set, uh, it's a module with a bunch of stuff that allows us to use the title MIDI package. Then uh, we can call this display output devices to view the, the MIDI devices connected to our system. And then in step three, we actually wire everything up. We're gonna create this thing called M1, which is really our connection to our synthesizer. Just like D1 in um, Dirt for playing samples, we are gonna use this M1 for playing MIDI. Uh, we're going to replace what's in double quotes here with our output device name, which we're going to get from step two. And then we've got our MIDI channel number that our synth is listening on. And then this last part, synth controller, is a really generic synth implementation that comes with title MIDI that allows us to send notes to our device. Um, if you have your own custom synthesizer and a custom synth module, you would specify it here. But we're not going to do that today. That'll be part two for the future. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, first, we'll evaluate this import statement and title boots up, as we can see at the bottom there. And that's done. Now we can display output devices. So I will eval this line. So now down below in the Atom uh, output down here, we can see a list of devices. And it's not really formatted very well, but we can still read it. Uh, we've got Microsoft MIDI Mapper, Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth, Scarlet 18i8 USB, and Loop B Internal MIDI. Now, your devices will be completely different than mine. Uh, my synthesizer, I've got a Korg Minilog next to me, and it is connected to the Scarlett 18i8 USB device. So I want to use the Scarlett device in my name. So I'm just going to put that down here before I do anything else. And yeah, like I said, I've got that mini log um, next to me here. I'll, I'll play a few notes. And yeah. Now you've heard it. Great. Okay. Step three. Uh, we need to call this or eval this line devices, MIDI devices. And I am not a Haskell programmer. I can't really explain what the heck this does other than it initializes this devices thingy. That's the technical term. And okay, we've done that. Now we call the next line or eval the next line, which will wire everything up. So we've, ooh, failure. Oh, I typed it wrong. Scarlet 18i8 
USB. Forgot that. It's case sensitive and you have to type it all correctly. Now let's try it again. Yes. Okay. We've got a success message down there. So now M1 is talking to our device on MIDI channel 15 using this generic synth controller. So now we can start sending notes. So how do we do that? Uh, if you have done any title programming, you've seen stuff like this, where we send a sound pattern with sample names. But title MIDI does not have the concept of sound, it has just the concept of notes. So instead we type a note pattern. And we can start with note zero, which uh, is the same as middle C. And um, in this case, it'd be C, E flat, F, G, uh, or note zero, three, five, and seven. And so if I evaluate this, we should hear the synth. And M1 silence will stop playing it. All right, so it worked. We've connected and we can play some notes. Great. Um, so let's talk about these note numbers a little bit. Uh, I mentioned that note zero is the same as middle C on the MIDI keyboard. Um, note actually normalizes everything around middle C. So zero is middle C, but middle C is actually note number 60. Um, if you want to use the absolute MIDI note values, you can use the MIDI note uh, parameter instead. And so this, oops, this pattern is equivalent to this one up here. So they, these should both sound the same. So MIDI note is the absolute value and note will center everything, or I should say it'll normalize everything at um, uh, note number 60. So zero is 60. And note is actually just um, an alias or it's the same as N, which you may have used in uh, with dirt samples. So N is really just specifying a note number. So we can use note for that. Um, all of the patterning stuff inside here is the same patterning logic that you're, you are used to using in dirt. So I can, um, you know, multiply this stuff or divide it. Oops. Um, all of the, all of those cool things. Um, uh, I'll get to some more of that in a minute, I guess. So let's just go back to our basic pattern here. So I've got a little bit of a release on my uh, synth patch right now. I'm going to turn the release all the way off. And I'm going to play the pattern again. So it's a very, very short note. So how do we control the duration of a note? So you can control the duration using the dir parameter. And you can specify uh, a pattern of dir values. I think the default is 0 0.8 seconds, I think. So we can specify a different duration in seconds. And of course, we can specify a pattern of values if we like. And just like everything else in Tidal, the, the duration pattern does not have to necessarily uh, match the same pattern as the notes. So in this case, I have a duration pattern that's um, uh, that runs over the course of two cycles, because I'm dividing it by two here. So you've got that same type of control that you do like you like in uh, like with dirt samples and all of the patterning patterning logic applies so I can reverse this by um, every second cycle I don't know if it's really evident in the sound there what it's doing but um, you know I can base in this case I'm reversing it 
uh, or I could speed it up using density. Uh, of course, that doesn't change the rhythm because it's all on the right side here. But anyway, the point is you can do everything with MIDI patterns that you can do with dirt patterns. Okay, so that's duration. Uh, another thing that we can do is control velocity. So velocity is a very, um, or it, it can be a, a feature on MIDI based synthesizers. And velocity is something that's supported by a synth controller. So we can send a velocity parameter. So uh, I'm not sure what the default value is, but uh, velocity of one, well, before I get into that, velocity on my synthesizer right now is mapped to the filter cutoff. So if I play a note softly with my fingers here, and then if I change that to play it with more force, you'll hear the, the, cutoff, um, the cutoff frequency increases. So the, the harder I play the note, the uh, higher the cutoff frequency. So hopefully, hopefully you can hear that difference. So velocity, we can control that with code. So if I have a velocity of 0 0.1 and a velocity of 1, you can hear two notes that have kind of a more of a muffled sound and then two notes that have more of a, an open, brighter sound. And of course, we can do something like use the, the saw function to create a, a slope of velocity values. I think a velocity of zero doesn't play the note at all. Uh, so we could even scale this from 0 0.1 to 1. Um, pretty cool. Uh, if your synth can map velocity to something else, you can get different types of effects. Uh, another thing is mod wheel. So on my synth, mod wheel is mapped to noise. So I've got a, a noise feature here. So if I turn, turn the noise up, you obviously hear some, some noise. Okay, so mod wheel. Um, now again, mod wheel is a, a generic MIDI message that we can send on each note and synth controller implements that. So mod wheel zero is no mod wheel effect. I'm gonna add a little bit of the release back here. Hold on one second. So if I add a little bit of mod wheel in, we should start to hear some, some noise. Pretty cool. And of course, you know, we can modulate this just like we did with the velocity. So on your synth, mod wheel uh, may be mapped to something else like vibrato or filter cutoff. Um, but of course you can um, have more expressive patterns with this approach. All right, um, moving on. So uh, the next thing I wanna talk about is uh, polyphony. So if, you're, you're, if your synth supports playing more note more than one note at the same time, you can do so by uh, just like you would specify multi multiple speeds or multiple sounds in the same pattern, you can do the same with notes. So here I have uh, two patterns separated by a comma, like so, and this will play an interval. And uh, my synth has four uh, four note polyphony 
um, so I can even have a, a third or fourth um, pattern at the same time here, like so. And of course your, your patterns don't have to have the same rhythm or the same duration. Um, you can do all the polyrhythmic stuff that you can do with dirt. Um, of course, you can also use the stack approach if that is your preference. Um, just making these notes up here. I'm just typing random values in. Um, but if you want to use stack, you can use that as well. Um, no right or wrong way to do it if that's your preference. Um, okay. The next thing I want to talk about is how to do something like a chord progression. Um, and this really isn't specific to MIDI. This is something that you can do with uh, Super Dirt synth defs or other melodic samples in Dirt. But um, because MIDI synths can be a, a very melodically expressive um, way of creating sounds, I thought I would maybe add this. So here's our basic pattern. So if I wanted to create a, like a progression of notes over time, uh, I need to raise or lower these note values. So let's say uh, every second cycle, I want to um, you know, raise it up by two steps. I can use the addition operator for an additive effect and say, uh, use the plus operator and and two. What this will do is every two cycles raise the end value by two. So here's what this sounds like. And th that's that's one thing you can do. If we get rid of the conditional every two cycles, we can even put the entire progression uh, in inside of here and just slow it down. We could express an entire progression uh, just in this one pattern right here. And so on. And um, so that's one way you can achieve some uh, chord progressions or scale or movement within your melody. Uh, another thing you can do is use when mod. So if I do you know, when mod eight four and do the same types of um, same type type of addition, this says that on cycles one through four, play the normal pattern, and then on cycles five, six, seven, and eight apply this addition by two. So that's that's another way you can do it. So it just is a way of uh, uh, expressing some movement, so to speak. Um, and of course, you can use the multiplication operator too. So if I say every two multiply n by two, this will take the values on the right and then multiply them by two. Kind of interesting. Um, and of course, you can do things like stut. So functions like stut or stut prime I guess stut prime specifically. I don't think stut will work. Stut is, uh, I think it might be specific to samples, but stut prime will take in any function you want and uh, st apply a stuttered effect to it. So if I say stut two, that'll double the note and do something with it. And let's slow the pattern down here. Um, so every eighth of a cycle, I'm going to stutter a note, and then I want to raise the step by two. So 
So that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, so by uh, stuttering it five times, I, I end up with a, a whole tone scale effect in this case. Um, yeah. I think that's all I wanted to cover. So... There you have it. We've installed Title MIDI and we've composed some patterns. We've used ModWheel, Dur, and Velocity to uh, express changes in the synth sound if our synth supports it. Um, yeah, so in, in the next tutorial, I'm going to cover custom synth implementation. So if you have a synthesizer that exposes its own unique features like um, let's say detuning or an LFO or amplitude or filter envelopes. Um, who knows? Um, how do you send title um, patterns to those things? So we've been using the, using the synth controller. You could create your own, you know, awesome controller to do something like that. So we'll get into that next time. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I wanted to say. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed. And if you've got a MIDI synth laying around, maybe this will be fun for you in your title endeavors. Yeah, okay. That's all. See you in the future, if not later. Mm -hmm.